guys, it's the Man doing what I love here. In today's edition of Movie Monday, I'm going to be ranking all the Marvel Phase 4 films that are announced at Comic-Con based on my excitement for the movies. The background is a bit different. I've been on vacation having a great time, but I was really excited, so let's get into this. At last place here, we have Black Widow. Now, I really love the character Black Widow. I think Scarlett Johansson's a great actor. Um, David Harbour's announcing the film. Loved him in Stranger Things. Um, Taskmaster looks like he's going to be in the film. Great villain. The reason this is so low in the last place is because it takes place after Civil War. It takes place before Infinity War and Endgame, so the stakes are not as high. And I just think the timing's not right. I Like I said, I like Black Widow as a character, but I feel like... I kind of like what they did for Angel of Ultron and Civil War. I feel like if they had a movie, maybe Phase 3 or Phase 2, that's kind of when the Prime was. That's kind of when the Black Widow hype was. Like, people love her as a character. You know, her in introduction to Iron Man 2, her in Avengers was really cool. I just don't feel like this is the correct time. I just don't like the area this is taking place. So, yeah, I mean, cool cast, but just for me... The time and hype is not there as it once was. So next up we have Eternals. Now, I, this cast looks great, and I think the idea of these all-powerful beings could be cool, but I do think there's a couple of issues. Number one, there's a lot of characters in this film. I think sometimes, yes, Marvel has handled a lot of characters, like in Infinity War, Endgame, Civil War, but most of those characters in those films were establishable. I just think Eternals, with all these group of people, that can be really confusing and hard to keep track of. They did that in Guardians of the Galaxy, but they don't have James Gunn attached to this project. And I just don't really, there's nothing that really gets me into it. Yeah, the cast is cool, but I just think they can, also if all powerful beings are going to have the Superman flaw where they have a trouble keeping him interesting and we've kind of seen the Superman films. I think this is a film that's either going to be really fantastic. I could see it being really good if, how amazing could look with the visual but I think it could be really in and I'm leaning more towards the end level right now but I'm excited to see how it can excite me in the future. Next up is Shang-Chi Legend of the Ten Rings. Now there's a lot of things I'm excited for. First of all kind of this martial arts look into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. How did they dive into that? Marvel does such a great job building worlds with you know, Black Panther kind of expanding these new areas and I'm excited for what they can do with this movie. I love the cast. I love the director. Um, I think that this is just a really cool section of the Marvel Universe, I just don't know how much of a higher stakes it's going to have because we're kind of in a post-endgame, you know, in this Marvel Cinematic Universe where I feel like the stakes are a bit higher, so it'll be interesting to see how this falls. I don't know too much about it. I don't know too much about the comic book character. That's why it's not higher, but I think this is a film that could be really great. I think it can have be special in the MCU and really succeed in that area. Next up is Thor Love and Thunder. There's a lot of things I'm excited for, and that is how does the director Taika Waititi handle that of Natalie Portman. I think this film's gonna rest a lot on her. I think he made um, Chris Hemsworth as Thor really interesting up until Ragnarok. I'm like, Thor is okay, but Taika Waititi comes in. Ragnarok, love that film, made Thor a great character. Tessa Thompson was amazing. Ragnarok, glad she's back. I just think in the first two Thor films, Natalie Portman was the weaker link in those movies. I hope Taika can work his magic and, you know, make a really great character. I think this film will rest on that. That's why it's not, say, top two in this list. But I still think that this one's going to be fun. I love the action feel they're going to have. I think this is just going to be a great return to what we have from Ragnarok. I'm excited for the God of Thunder to return. Next up is Blade. Oh my gosh. When I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, that was fantastic. I know it's not officially phase four, but I wanted to include it because we did see the title card of it. And man, I am just pumped through the roof about this. Marshall, Marshall Ali, um, sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. I loved him um, in Spider-Verse as Uncle Aaron. I think as a prowler, he was one of the best villains in Spider-Verse. And then, you know, Spider-Verse had a ton of characters, so standing out is really fantastic to do. Um, I'm just excited to have Blade back. I think that Blade, I've kind of seen people discuss, it kind of has a, you know, there's a lot of fans of him, and he's a really cool character. I just think having him in the MCU is really fantastic. I just think it's cool how they brought him back, kind of like how they did with Daredevil. You know, the original Daredevil film with Ben Affleck wasn't that great. They brought him back for the TV show Fantastic. The Blade films in most eyes are pretty fun movies, and I think the MCU can just deliver a really fantastic 
version of Blay. I'm excited to see what they do with all the elements of him. It's just a film that has me real excited, but it's not number one. And number one is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. First of all, one of the things I'm excited is um, Elizabeth o Olsen and Scarlet Witch. I think Scarlet Witch has been one of the most underrated characters in every movie she's in. I'm always interested in her performance. Benedict Cumberbatch has been killing us, Doctor Strange. I love him and all the roles he does. In multiverse, you know, do we get cameos from actors? How does that play into the MCU? What can they do? I'm just so excited for that. I thought Doctor Strange 1 was a fine film. The thing I really loved about it was the visuals, and I can't wait how this movie can expand those visuals and make it more amazing. I also really love how this might be a bit of a um, a more spooky film, Multiverse of Madness, have a bit more horror elements. Um, sprinkled in, which I'm excited to see kind of the MC going to that. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has done a great job in different genres, so I'm excited to see how they tackle this. I think this can be just a huge film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that can just really, you know, make it more fantastic as it already is. Well, guys, that'll do it. Let me know in the comments below which ones are you most excited for, what are your thoughts on this film. Overall, this is my entertainment, doing what I love, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.